for the uh, the main event for tonight is is our Chicago White Sox, who uh, you know unfortunately finished at near you know the bottom of the league last year after finishing 500 in 2022, winning the division in 21. Uh, you know, obviously having a playoff berth in the shortened 2020 season, there was a lot to look forward to uh, a couple of years ago. Um, you know, now we kind of know what the reality of the situation is. Um, it's a little bit bleaker, uh, you know, but it's nice to know that we're, you know, refreshing the executive staff. Uh, you know, we brought in some new coaches. We have a lot of payroll to work with. Um, we just saw Chris Getz pull off a five for one deal for Aaron Bummer to bring over a lot more pitching depth, infield depth, you name it. Um, just looking at um, spot track um, and the roster that we have and their payroll overall, it looks like it could be ranging anywhere from 105 to 120 million um, based on their 40 man roster as of right now. Um, looking at where the White Sox were spending over the last couple of years, it was in the range of 180 to 190 million dollars. Uh, Jerry Reinsdorf spit on the news, basically saying that he wants to see that payroll uh, come down just a touch. So I don't know what that means exactly, uh, but I guess conservatively, I've kind of estimated maybe that's somewere in the range of you know 170, 175 million dollars going into 2024 if, if they're looking at that you know that top end of the range. So. Um, I have a lot more thoughts. I have a lot more assumptions that I've kind of baked in, but I guess I'll just kick it over to you, Wayne, if you have any kind of initial framing thoughts for the White Sox and this, uh, this off season ahead. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a transitionary year. I feel like that the White Sox are going through, um, at least in my opinion, I, I do, I did like the trade obviously with bummer, right? It's like, they kind of capitalized. I, I feel like that that's the main thing. It felt like we we weren't just kind of sitting back and, and just watching things go. We were actually like trying to do things and make our club and our, our future a little bit brighter. Um, you know, we capitalized on, I think the Braves, I think you might've mentioned before, like the Braves, like the reason why they did this wasn't because of the talent. Like they, like they're just big fans of Aaron Bummer. Right. Um, but yeah, because I, I think a couple of those players that they traded for were on their 40 man roster and, they're, you know, these are players that, that we're probably going to go bye bye anyways. So might as well get something for him. And then, you know, you know, uh, who knows what happens with Aaron Bummer? I think middle relief pitchers. You know, one year they have an eight ERA, the next year they have a two two ERA, and that's just how it is. And you know, it is nice to have like a lefty, you know, in the bullpen there. So I get it, it makes sense. I think for both squads, kind of a win win in a way uh, here. So, um, but yeah, I think. You know, adding in some just overall play, uh, overall young talent. I think that's the biggest thing. Adding in some young talent, and then if we are able to add, you know, a vet for cheap or something like that, uh, that kind of sets the tone. Like has has a veteran presence to them that it's like, okay, I want this person and players like him, right? Because I think that was something we missed completely this past couple of seasons was a player, you know, with, especially with Jose Abreu, right, leaving for. The Astros, that's like, hey, this is just how you do business. This is how you are to be as a major league baseball player. This is like the White Sox culture. Just somebody with that winning pedigree that you want to emulate. You have a lot of young talent that we had on here. So uh, I think a combination of that just probably makes the most sense for the White Sox. Um, you know, I'm trying to give Chris Getz the, the benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, maybe I, I would have liked to have somebody obviously outside of the organization from yeah, an organization from, you know, the Rays or, you know, the, the Marlins or something like that, or I don't know. Uh, yeah, a lot of other you know, people I, I would would have liked to have seen in that seat, but, you know, it is what it is, and we'll see what happens if he is able to, you know, kind of shut us up and then actually get some talent. And, yeah, like I said, this was a good start, I think, with the Aaron, Aaron Bummer trade here. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, are there any players you want to talk about? But or any, any maybe, maybe, maybe there's some – you know, free agents out there, some of those vets I was talking about, like that you want to see, like, I would love to see 25 players just like this guy. Yeah. Um, well, man, I, I guess like I have framed this up for myself. Like I've, I've penciled down some assumptions uh, that I'm working with here um, just to, just to level set a little bit. But I think the first one for me is like, we probably have $50 million in capital to spend like on a year to year basis. Like we're adding $50 million on an annual, you know, annual basis to our roster. Um, 
looking at the fact that Benintendi is the highest contract we've ever doled out at five years, 75, I'm going to make an assumption that we're not going to break the bank and go above a contract of that, of that size and volume. Um, and then I just also looked at some of our needs. I mean, I looked at our 40 man roster. I penciled it down in terms of salary, in terms of positions and such. We definitely need a catcher, a second baseman, a shortstop, a right fielder, and at very least a starting pitcher and an extra reliever. Um, you know, we have a lot of guys who will be battling for spots throughout spring training and might sign a bunch of guys to minor, minor deals and things like that. But like fundamentally that's kind of what we need. So just kind of looking at that, you know, the six positions or so, the average spend is probably be somewhere around $8 million per player. Um, I guess I have a bunch of guys that I've highlighted on these positions, but maybe I'll just start it off with two guys that I'm most excited about us signing. Um, and I want to get your thoughts and then, you know, for sure we'll answer your questions on the 25 man roster guys. I'd love to see fill that out veterans that we could bring in too. But for me, based on what you said, I'm in complete agreement of where we are. There's been these rumors floated around by Reinsdorf and Getz that we're going for it in 24. We're trying to win the central, yada, yada, yada. What does that really mean? It means that they don't think that much about the central and they're going to do, you know, as much as they think is necessary to win the central division, which for a lot of us doesn't really mean a lot. And what it really says is, you know, we're not trying to compete with uh, the Dodgers, the Astros, the Braves, the Rangers. Like we're trying to, we're just trying to get <laughs> better than the twins, which is like a, you know, 88 win team. But for me, the goalposts are starting in 2025. It's starting in 2025. For, for me, there were two guys that I think could be incredibly interesting anchors that are totally worth the gamble for what they've done in other leagues. They're both international. Uh, one's an outfielder and one's a pitcher. The outfielder for me is from the Korean baseball organization. His name's Jung Hoo Lee. Um, this guy is 25 years old. MLBTR projects that he would uh, cost five years, $50 million. Um, for seven years, he batted 300 with a 700 OPS. Um, he averaged about 20 to 25 home runs per year. He's a natural center fielder. And a lot of what you know, folks have been saying scouting wise is that he may not play center field in the major leagues. So if that's, you know, the, the rumor, Hey, we got right field wide open. It's been wide open for a very long time. And everything that gets has been preaching has been defense, speed, contact, the right way to play the game. Love to bring over a game changer like that. We, we saw what happened in Boston with, uh, you know, Matsusaka Yoshida uh, came in with a lot of skepticism at five years, $90 million, completely earned that contract and more, uh, batted around 290 with 20 plus home runs for Boston with an absolute fixture in the middle of their order. Um, who knows what he could give us? Maybe he gives us 10 to 15 home runs a year. Maybe that's where he's at to start it off. But man, like it gives us youth. It gives us speed. It gives us somebody who can play in our corner. It gives us a new look. It, it opens us up to Asia for, for talent. Like sign me up for that. The guys bats lefty. Perfect. Like perfect. That's my first one. Go after Jung Hoo Lee, make that offer competitive. But even if it's competitive, it's still within our budget. Second guy, Cuban pitcher, Yariel Rodriguez guys, 26 years old. He's averaged about a hundred innings a year, uh, three ERA. Um, MLBTR projects he'd be four years, $32 million. Um, for me, you're getting a guy in his prime window. We have a lot of familiarity with Cuban players. We've got a few on our roster. We've got Luis Robert. We've got um, Yoan Mancata, obviously. We've got guys who you know, come from that place and could be great assets to a guy like Gary L coming in. I mean, I know we've talked a lot about culture. We don't love Mancata, but we sure as hell love having Luis Robert on this team. Um, I think... He'd be a perfect fit. He's a great flyer. Four years, 32 would bring him into his age 30 season at the very end of it. You know, at this point, you know, we obviously need guys who can gobble up innings, but we also need to shoot for some upside here. And, you know, that, that length of contract would get us into our contention window too. So those are the first two guys I wanted to throw out there for any sort of discussion and just hear what you have to say, Wayne. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I know. I, I, I 100% agree. I think 
all those players make sense. And then, yeah, for the right dollar amount too. So I, I mean, the question of course is, do they actually want to play here? Uh, I think Yariel, he's, he's definitely like somebody that I, I feel like we can get because of the, the Cuban element that we do have and that, you know, Hey, we'll use whatever advantage or even perceived advantage that we can. Um, would love to see a player like Jung, Jung Hoo Lee come over as well. You know, uh, I know a lot of Korean baseball players, right? They just, they can get on base, man. <laughs> they, can, they can get on base, you know, left, lefty at bat, you know, like you said. And uh, we, we just need a lot of that. Like, I, I don't want Ben Benintendi to be our best left-handed hitter, right? Uh, you know, like Gavin Sheets, he can hit here and there, but he definitely has not been like the guy, right? So, um, yeah, would love to see somebody like that to kind of mesh with, you know, the, the heavy right-handed uh, talent that we do have, you know, with uh, Vaughn and then obviously Roberts, like, you know, those are the, definitely the players I think we want to build around. But yeah, having complementary pieces there with left-handed you know, hitters who get on base, you know, we can steal base here and there, play good defense. Like, you know, if that's what Getz wants, then I think that really, is, you know, is kind of fits what we have. You know, we have some power, you know, but then obviously complementing that with uh, the speed, the defense, I think, especially now, yeah, speed is actually a little bit more of a premium now. So if we can get some speedsters to be there with uh, the, the power that we do have, great. And then obviously can they hit? Perfect. Um, yeah, and then Yario Rodriguez, I think he, he fits our timeline. I think that's the, that's the idea. He fits our timeline. We can be patient with him. He can, we, he can develop. Uh, and yeah, you know, we can get him for you know a, a good a good cost, I think, uh, for the next several years. So all those players, I think, can make sense. Will we do it? I don't know. Uh, do they want to come here? I don't know. I think those are the bigger questions. But yeah, would love to see players such as those two guys you mentioned join joining the the squad, and then yeah, that that can definitely help us improve. I think overall uh, for the next couple of years. For, for sure. So in the vein of your question, did you want me to answer that? Or do you want to throw out a player or two that you're, you know, most interested in? Um, I, player that I'm most interested in. Well, you were talking about, I think second base, right? Uh, was one yeah. thing, like one, one position. And it's like, you know, we've had this experimentation, I think with, you know, older vets, young people. And I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of like, <clears throat> Like we need to we need to get this thing done. I feel like we we've had second base kind of just be there, uh, like an open, uh, open spot that you know Elvis Andrews. Like yeah, great. You know if we got him like five six years ago, that would have been perfect. But um, yeah, I don't know. I was looking at I was I was thinking about Woodfield a little bit, but at the same time, it kind of feels like that we're getting into that same vein of you know older players, but. I don't know. He's he's kind of played it okay though, and maybe we can utilize him and then still like develop somebody and yeah, use him as a plug and play. I just don't think that Elvis Andrews. I feel like he's gonna be gone. He's not gonna come back again. And you know, uh, so I don't know. Is there a second baseman that you you think you want to see for the White Sox, or you know, maybe maybe uh, Merrifield is the answer there. Yeah. Um... This goes along to your question, by the way, guys that I want to have on the team. I think going into kind of researching the offseason, the guys that are available and knowing our needs, shortstop and second base, both come with some pretty big holes here. Like I know people are standing uh, in the White Sox organization about bringing over Nicky Lopez. Uh, love the kid's glove. Amazing glove guy from Naperville. But he hasn't done much with the bat. I mean, averaging like two home runs a year, batting. 220, 230, 240. I mean, that's just, that's a backup utility infielder and a good one at that. I'd love to have him kind of mixed up as a, you know, around the diamond because he's defensive runs saved or off the charts, especially at all four infield positions. So love having Lopez, but it's, it's not a starter guy. When I first thought about this off season, Ahmed Rosario stood out to me so much because he's the type of guy that you know, it's kind of that grit and grind player that I think they're looking for. Um, guy who's batting, you know, 270, uh, has a little bit of pop, you know, has averaged about 10 homers, uh, 60 RBIs, can also get you 15 to 20 stolen bases. Had a bit of a down year going to Los Angeles, coming from Cleveland, but also just comes from Cleveland, like knows how the Guardians play ball. We want to play like the Guardians. That's, that's 
basically what I've been hearing out of Chris Getz. It's like, we want to have small ball. We want to have a great defense, some speed. Why not take a guy who's been, you know, in Cleveland for the majority of his career? He is a liability somewhat at shortstop, but I think the beauty of it is, is that by the time Colson Montgomery is ready, you can shift Ahmed Rosario over to second base and he can be that kind of acid for you right there once Colson is ready. And you can have Nicky Lopez be that stopgap at short if you need it um, in that sense. Um, on the same question at second base too, I think this is kind of a, uh, it can be Rosario or, or it can be Rosario and, and I think the and for me is Adam Frazier. Um, Adam Frazier's kind of been on our radar for a while uh, when he was in with Pittsburgh, San Diego, in terms of trades. He's 32 years old. Um, last year, he actually had kind of a, a comeback year with the Orioles, batted 240 with 13 homers, 60 RBIs, 11 stolen bases. Um, he's 32 years old, and he got a one-year $8 million deal last year. I think if we did a one-year deal, two-year deal in that 5 to 8 to $10 million range, that might be might be decent. And I think the beauty of Adam Frazier too, is he plays second base. Uh, he's a little bit uh, below grade um, as a second base defender, but he is a 60 defensive run saved average right fielder. And I think the beauty of that is, is you know, he bats lefty. If you had Rosario and him up the middle, by the time Colson's ready to come up, you scoot Rosario over, you push Frazier out to right field if we don't get uh, Lee out there. So it's kind of like, I kind of like this idea of going after these grinder types that can play multiple positions. And then we're, we're starting to get creative. We're starting to really like mix and match our, you know, our, you know, lineup on a daily basis to, uh, to go against whoever, you know, we're playing. And uh, I think Frazier has been on enough good teams to know what it, what it takes to win and seems like a pretty stable guy overall. So, you know, why not add him as like one of our, our key vets here in the next two years. And uh, the only thing I'll say to Merrifield I love Merrifield, man. Another Gamecock, another guy that I've seen play in college, but he is 35 years old. I mean, he's going into his age 35 season. So how many more good years does he have left? And when we're actually trying to contend, you know, can he actually be a part of that mix? Yeah. I mean, I do like the Frazier. Um, he, he, more a lefty at bat as well. So, and at second baseman, premium position. Yeah, if he can get... 10 homers, yeah, bat 240, 250, something like that, get on base 300, something like that. Perfect. That's exactly, I think, what we want for second base, uh, especially if this is a build-up year. You know, we don't, we're not expecting him to have 30 homers or something like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know, some combination like of that, or yeah, if there is a player out there that can play, like, second base or outfield, you know, that would be nice, too. But, obviously, that's, you know, not easier said than done sometimes. Um, I don't know. It, it's it it is like I don't think we can find so, like a young, obviously young second baseman that we just know is going to rock it like right off the bat there. Uh, but yeah, you know, for me, it's like yeah, if we can get I don't know, maybe it is like a filler and they're kind of like an Elvis Andrews, just younger basically. But yeah, hopefully a lefty at bat. Um, I don't know no, other names. I'm looking out. I'm I'm looking at like Colton Wong. Like maybe he. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we do, do, can we just. Like get as much every single ounce of talent that he has, he has left. Obviously, he's kind of struggled, I think, of recent years, but uh, has playoff pedigree. Uh, kind of has that gritty attitude that you want to build off a team from. Like you know, like I was mentioning before, culture setters. So if we can get that from a second baseman, then that's great. So, but yeah, I think Adam Frazier would be great. Um, we'll see if he wants to stay though. I know I feel like they're building up some stuff over there with the Baltimore Orioles. Um, but at the same time, yeah, would love to have that kind of caliber player, I think, join the White Sox. But yeah, some some player that has a history of winning can and, you know, actually hit a little bit too. That second base makes sense. For sure. And I do like that you threw out Colton Wong. He was on my short list of guys that I put down on paper because like you're saying, he's going to be free. I mean, he's going to be he's going to be maybe a million dollar contract right there. And he's, he's just a lottery ticket, you know, and, and what are you really asking for? Like we're talking about 240, 250 with 10 home runs and some good defense. And, you know, somebody who's been there and done it, he's had a lot of time with St. Louis and some in Milwaukee and even in Seattle where he struggled, but it's like, yeah, man, he's got that right, you know, character that I think, you know, you want to have some veterans in this younger clubhouse too. We need that balance. So, um, no, I think that's a great name. Um, 
moving down my line of needs here, we talked infield, we talked outfield a bit. Looking at catcher, um, there's a couple guys that really stand out, one in particular for me, but Victor Caratini, um, you know, 30 years old. I mean, last year batted 260 with a 700 plus OPS, had seven bombs and uh, was pretty much a league average catcher, but age 30 season is a switch hitter. Um, you know, he's also been on playoff teams before, whether it's, you know, been with uh, the Cubs Padres, I mean, this past year with the Brewers, but I mean, he signed for $3 million for one year with the Brewers and had pretty much an average season for him. So you, you make him a year older or so, um, maybe had a little bit more pop this past season. Maybe he's asking for $5 million. Why not hook up with him on a three-year deal, two, three-year deal, lock down your catcher position for a couple of seasons, a guy who can play, you know, league average ball. And you know, somebody I think has a really good reputation around the league, somebody who could be kind of that mentor once, uh, you know, Edgar Cuero is ready to go, or maybe Corey Lee has a, a bounce back here um, in terms of what he can do as a prospect. But yeah, I mean, he was one guy I'm looking at. Um, one guy who really has a huge name, but has fallen off the radar, but is actually statistically pretty amazing is Gary Sanchez. Um, Gary is also 30 years old. Um, he had 19 home runs last year, but what I thought was most impressive is he was the 27th ranked D war player in the game uh 17 defensive runs saved on the year um this guy's impressive i mean he's got the power obviously the batting average is awful the on base is awful but like it's catcher in today's day and age in baseball it's 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 a pretty ugly position offensively and man i mean he's he's definitely got the most war of any free agent catcher it's just kind of like you hear the name and you instantly think like strikeouts you know bust you know he just he never capitalized on those 30 home run years but like his last year with the Padres was pretty impressive um I might still steer with you know Carantini but man if Gary if Gary Sanchez is basically asking for the same money why not man why not yeah I, I love Sanchez I love that pick um you know in all ball in our ballpark like I can definitely see him you know if he pit if he uh plays 130 games or something like that he could probably hit 20 some odd 30 some odd homers there yeah maybe he bats you know 200 you know adam duns it a little bit but i'll take that if you mentioned at catcher uh if he can you know he he does have presence like you mentioned you you threw up a lot of his defensive statistics and you know has a history of you know working with some pitching staff as well and yeah let's let's do that like let's let's utilize his veteran presence of you know being with you know he was with the yankees with the twins right like knows different organizations and then yeah, was with the padres right so yeah would love a player like that or yeah like carantini as well i think those are excellent players who've been around the league a little bit um still have some talent there like age 30 i think that's great from the from the catcher perspective and then yeah if, if we can you know utilize those players to help, you know yeah get uh, Corey Lee, you know, uh, be, be mentors towards them, you know, would love to see a like, Corey Lee, like resurgence, you know, if he's able to, you know, get 20 homers or something like that, like that'd be a nice surprise. Right. I feel like, so getting that and then building up a rotation, you know, if we are able to get, you know, some of the young pitchers that we do have, right. Obviously, you know, sees he's kind of been our veteran presence there, but you know, if there's other players or other pitchers that we can get that, that, that we're bringing up, right. Like, I think that makes sense. And then obviously the rest of our, the rest of our squad, I think, needs that veteran presence. So, um, yeah, would love to see a player like Gary Sanchez or Victor Carantini there. Um, I know a name has been thrown around too is Mitch, Mitch Garver, but I, I don't think it necessarily makes sense for the White Sox at this point. Um, age 32 or soon to be 33, it looks like. So, but you know, a player like that, just a veteran presence to kind of just install there. But you know, I, I think, yeah, if, if we do see a team like I'm just gonna say, like, yeah, Gary Sanchez there catcher um lee out there in a you know right field or something or you know yeah like the corner outfield that'd be great like he can hit a little bit you know just get on base have decent speed here and there that's perfect you know good solid defense yeah second base you know like you mentioned like if we already get adam frazier or colton wong just like kind of a stopgap year you know we'll see what we can what else we can do there and then a Yariel like uh, Rodriguez, I feel like something like that would be great from the from the pitcher standpoint 
young pitcher that we can build up for the next couple of years. Um, I don't know. I, I, I would, I would be like, okay with that. Um, and you know, as a build up year, but I don't know. Yeah. I feel like we just need more uh, from a free agency acquisition standpoint. I feel like, yeah, we need culture setters, just hard, hard working, you know, type of players that we want to build from. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the only other two names I wanted to throw out there, at least on the pitching side, two guys that I think will come at an extreme discount. We're talking like a million bucks a contract, but Dakota Hudson, who just got non-tendered by the Cardinals. Um, he had almost a five ERA last year, but still on his career is 38 and 20 with a 3.8 ERA. Um, I mean, he, he might be looking at like a $2 million deal, uh, just trying to get back on the right track. I mean, maybe we could gobble him up for two years if we want to get ambitious with three. Um, maybe pushing it a little bit, but in the same sense, I mean, he's 29 years old. Um, he's, he's pitched up to 175 innings in the past, 140 this past season. So, um, you know, he might be interesting there. And then Penn Murphy uh, got non-tendered by the Seattle Mariners after having a 1.29 ERA. Um, he was a 2. Point, he was a 2.70 career ERA as well out of the pen for the Mariners. Um, I mean, he himself, 30 years old. I'm thinking this guy could be like our discount setup man if Gregory Santos isn't available or has a tough time, maybe he's pushing some closer duty here and there. But like, there's some bargains around here. If you just like look around the pages and I think the trade that they just pulled for, you know, those guys in the Braves uh, and Aaron Bummer deal, it's like, they're going to be bringing a lot of guys to uh training camp to compete. I just hope they, they go after it in that sense and like really just bring in a large volume of these guys that are, making minimum salary to $2 million a year and just have them go at it. See what, see what happens. Yeah. I'm looking, uh, I'm looking down the line here of like, you know, 20, like late twenties, you know, uh, 30 year old veterans. Like I'm looking at, you know, Wade Miley or like a Zach Davies or even J Jack Flaherty. Like, I don't know, you know, uh, players that had terrible years, previous years, but, you know, have a history of success or early success. And it's like, I don't know, if we can get a Mike Clevenger type of year, right. Uh, you know, without the abuse, right. Like that, I feel like that, <laughs> that, that would be great. You know, if, uh, you know, have that bounce back. You have that Cody Bellinger type of year, right. Where you, you, you have a privilege kind of, kind of deal, you know, great. If you can, uh, you know, utilize this and leverage it as a way to get a next contract, whether it be through us or through another organization. Right. I feel like there's just a lot of different, Players like that from the pitching rotation standpoint that we can get, yeah, like a one, maybe two year deal uh, at a bargain discount rate. Like, yeah, like a Zach Davies or, like, you know, some of the players I mentioned there. Mike, Michael Lorenzen as well. Like, you know, he, I know he was a little bit of a reliever slash uh, starting pitcher there. Like, I, I feel like we can use any type of player like that there. Um, if we are able to get a Zane Greggy, I know he has nothing left, but uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> You know he's he's but he's a finesse pitcher, and I think you know it'd be nice to see a player like that you know help out some again some of our younger pitching staff, right? Um, I get it. It's all about the development. I feel like we just need and any player that we can get there, that'd be great if they can help out there. So, man, yeah, I mean, Granky's funny because it's like you may not get a lot, but imagine what he could potentially teach to you know that whole roster of pitchers, like. You were saying with the David Wells example, it's like that's another great guy to kind of model your game after. But uh, I had Lorenzen on my list here too. Um, MLBTR has him going for two years, $22 million. They have Giolito going for two years, 44. And Lorenzen <laughs> had better numbers across the board last year and for his career. So it's like you just got to find that kind of stuff. It's like I wouldn't be against them bringing back Giolito if it's the right price for maybe a year or two, but it's like, you know, if that's what it's going to cost to get Geo, like go ahead and go get Lorenzen because he's going to be a way better value, um, in my yeah. opinion. No, for sure. Lorenzen totally makes sense. I think again, like we we can bargain hunt. You know, I think we talked about it before. It's like if we want to be bargain hunters, let's be bargain hunters and let's play it like it is. But yeah, just you know, throwing a uh, big contracts to players that don't make sense. Exactly. That's kind of, kind of what we're trying to avoid here. Um, so yeah, Lorenzen. You know, it'd be great if we can have a player like him. Uh, I don't know, is Cueto still around or ticking? Like, you know, players like that, I think, again, culture setters, we can, uh, to help build up, you know, be good examples, I think, for the 
our a, a younger pitching staff, right? I think is what we're trying to shoot for. So, yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens this winter. Um, we are already hearing rumors of Dylan Cease, Eloy Jimenez, guys who like mm -hmm. could be the next ones being traded. So, um, may shake up our boards a little bit as we go along. Maybe uh, you know at some point down the line here this winter, we we come back and and talk about mm -hmm. what's happened and what more we want to see because in most of these years too, like this free agent period can take a very very long time to. Yeah. completely play out but uh yeah definitely yeah. excited for it yeah i mean do you think we ought to be moving on from cease like that's that's the fun question right uh because i think we have him for uh i think until 2025 if, if i'm not mistaken um you know we can definitely get him probably for some decent prospects um but yeah i don't know is there a team do you think we ought to be trading for or eyeing for for you know some of their prospects uh or, you know, do you think we ought to just kind of sit back and be like, all right, let's actually retain some of, you know, pretty decent talent that we're, that we, you know, we do have, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, it's a yes. I mean, it's a yes. Um, not because I don't like the player that is Dylan Cease. I think he's a good, you know, SB2, SB3 in your rotation. Um, this year he's probably making, you know, 8.5 to $8.5 million in arbitration. Um, and, his second to last year with us before he hits free agency. He's a Boris client. We're not going to be matching whatever contract he's asking for if he's still relevant, you know, in a couple of years. So for me, uh, the clock is ticking, you know, the clock is ticking on the value you can get for this guy. Um, given where the contracts have been for, you know, Aaron Nola, what it might be for other pitchers. I mean, Dylan C's coming in at $8 million this year is an amazing discount. It's an amazing value. So, if you got two more years of control of that, um, man, you know, for any team that needs another playoff starter, I mean, he's for sure up for grabs. Again, like we're talking about, we're not fooled by the 2024 uh, competitive window. Um, 2025 for me is kind of like a best case scenario in terms of like when we'd actually be vying for playoffs. But I think the important thing is kind of looking around, finding those teams and you know, I've heard the Orioles, I've heard the Dodgers, um, based on the amount of prospect depth that they actually have, we could be looking at the Rangers or something like that, but with whatever we get back, we're going to have to get some pitching depth, I think number one. And then, you know, if they want to throw in like a good, um, offensive player as well, that'd be amazing. I, I think the Dodgers probably have the upper hand there because they've got guys like Ryan Pepio, Emmett Sheehan, they've got Gavin Stone, Michael Grove, they've got some guys there uh, that could be, you know, depth pieces for us in the future uh, in our rotation. And they've also got some catching depth in their high minors. So um, the Dodgers seem to make the most sense. They've been in those, uh, you know, those, those rumor mills and stuff, but uh, I've also heard the Astros are trying to make a play. So we'll just have to see, man. But um, yeah, if, if you were asking me, would I trade Dylan Cease? I, I think this year, whether it's off season or the trade deadline, we're probably going to be moving them. Yeah, because we can definitely leverage uh, his, yeah, his years, right? Uh, you know, uh, his con his current contract as a way to get acquired top level talents, similar to how, you know, we were able to get uh, a, a haul, right, for for Chris Sale, right, in the past, so or even Cantana. So, yeah, using u utilizing that as leverage, I think makes the most sense. So, yeah, I think. I don't think he. I don't think he survives uh, the end of the year. Uh, I think we are able to move on from him probably from the tr by the trade deadline. In my opinion, I think. Uh, I think gets. You know, I think this Bear Aaron Bummer trade. It seems like he's kind of sending that message a little bit of like, okay, yeah, we're we're tr we're, we're going to try to get younger and get some players that we think, uh, you know, could be bit building blocks or something like that for us in the future. So, um, and then yeah, Tim Anderson too. Moving on from him. <laughs> uh, he was kind of like our culture, right, for the past several years, and now he's not going to be part of this club anymore. So yeah, it's going to be a whole new regime. I feel like that he's going to be trying to building off from here. So yeah, don't see him. Uh, uh, I don't see Don't see being with the White Sox for too long. And uh, yeah, I, I have been hearing about the Dodgers. I think yeah, they they just have a lot of talent. <laughs> they have a lot of talent, <laughs> and they need pitching, so it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. How about 
when we're talking about culture, because I think the Tim Anderson point's pretty important. I'm I'm actually glad they're they're moving on. I really hope he finds another home and hey, for himself, like get some success, like go have some new success somewhere else. But I feel like, yeah, there's some guys who just maybe took advantage of that situation of being, you know, paid and, and kind of young, uh, you know, maybe got too much too early and let it get to their heads in some some senses. But this clubhouse needs a change. I mean, I guess on that note, I was going to ask you, like, what do you think about, you know, Mankata making 25 million and Eloy making around 14 million this upcoming year? And, you know, if you were running the show, I mean, what, what would you what would you do with one or both of those guys? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Mankata, he's, he's, he stayed his, he stayed, he stayed the, his length of time that the maximum length of time that he, he ought to do right now. I, I think I would move on from Mankata probably as soon as possible. Um, I mean, you like hits here and there, like he's, he's not completely terrible or, or useless. That being said, he hasn't lived up to, the, I think, the height that we've kind of all expected to as much. Uh, you know, did have that 30 homer season and such, but, you know, obviously he's much more of a DH. Uh, and it's like, I don't know, for a player that's basically, you know, uh, seen just strictly as a DH, hasn't even been that, that healthy at for a DH person. So, I don't know, there's just a lot of question marks like that. Just it doesn't make as much sense. So, but Mankata, I would like to see us move on from, um, you know, for a... Honestly, I would like to have seen him maybe more so for second base, right? I think, you know, the offensive value that he brings doesn't make sense for third base. But for second base, it makes a ton of sense. You know, if he is able to hit, you know, 15, 18 homers, bat 240, 250, great. Do that at second base, right? You know, slim down a little bit uh, and, uh, you know, be a switch hitter for, from the second base uh, side, which you've, you've had some experience for, but I get it. They, you know, he's definitely a a wider frame and they probably want to, you know, utilize him on that, you know, corner outfield position a little bit more, but yeah, if he were to be, you know, in second base man and, and kind of trim down there, great. But I just don't think that's going to happen. And then, yeah, build like, you know, maybe we do, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know if Colson Montgomery, if he's the launch answer at shortstop, but we'd love to have that flexibility. Right. It's like, Hey, maybe we want to move him to third base. Right. And then get like a, you know, Rosario, I'm a Rosario or something like that on the shortstop side, or you know another defensive, some sort of defensive minus shortstop. I think it makes sense there, but something like that, you know, just to give us some flexibility. And but I, I, I definitely don't see Mankata here for too long. Uh, don't mind Eloy, but uh, Mankata, I feel like, yeah, he's just been detrimental to the club. I feel like, <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I think again, he's part of that culture and. Um, I, th- I think he plays pretty lazy in terms of what he could actually bring to a team, to the game. I think he's still a pretty great defender over there at third base. I think one thing that was, I guess, not really floated out in a lot of the outlets that I've been listening to on the White Sox or baseball mm-hmm. in general, but like this idea of maybe attaching his contract to a cease trade. I mean, maybe you look at a contender and you say, hey, you got one year, $25 million from Ankata. Uh, You want Dylan Cease? You got to take both in the package. Uh, so in return, maybe we take a bad contract too, but in the same sense, like maybe we take a little bit less prospect depth, you know, still getting probably some some blue chippers in there, but like in the same sense, like maybe freeing up some of the books there, at least for one year, um, might be interesting if we have another guy in mind. More likely scenario, we just eat it with Johan at third, hopefully get the most out of him that we can and trade him at the deadline. For Eloy, you know, we got three more years of it. I think for me, I've, I've heard his name in the rumor mill. Um, I obviously think he's a much better talent than Yoan, but in the same sense, it's like he's kind of got his own attitude about wanting to play the outfield and consistently being injured and consistently putting up okay numbers, but not over the course of 162 game season. So we always get, you know, kind of cut short on what he can truly be. But um, yeah, I mean, if he's on our team, I think, that's okay as long as he's willing to play DH uh, permanently. And, uh, you know, if he's not, then, hey, opening up that DH spot to whoever wants to play there uh, and just getting more athletic, maybe turning Eloy into another athlete that can play all over the diamond or in the outfield or wherever you really need him. And then, you know, maybe it's Vaughn one day, Gavin Sheets another, maybe it's Mankata here and there, Robert, whatever you got to do, you know? 
Yeah. Are there are there any players that you think at this point are off the table for trading? Off the table for me, um, I mean, no, 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 because I mean, even if it's Robert, you know, like Robert's probably the most the most sure thing that we have on this team in terms of talent, contract, uh, age, upside, you name it. But even Robert's had some 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 hiccups along the way. He's not been like the Robert we saw in 23 for the last four years. I mean, he was great in 2020 in the shortened year in his rookie year, but was was kind of injured or, you know, not really living up to his own standards in the prior two years. So he's not bulletproof by any means. And like, Again, if people are looking at Luis Robert, who's got one of the most desirable contracts of any all-star in the game, man, we could get something incredibly serious for him. I mean, imagine a Cease Robert deal, what that might look like uh, if both those guys were to go in the same package. I mean, we may as well take the Dodgers entire you know, farm system. <laughs> you know, so. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it'll actually happen, but you know, I don't I don't have any um I don't have any soft spots, man. I mean, if we were winning baseball games and this was the the Sox of the 2000s, the early 2000s, I'd have felt like shit if we <laughs> traded Paul Canerico or Joe Creedy or AJ Pierzynski or Scott Podsednik in the day or whatever else it would. Like, I remember the Aaron Rowan trade and feeling like a little hurt, even though we were bringing over Jim Tomey. Um, these days, it's like I'm so spiteful towards our team, our organization that... Hey man, whatever whatever it's going to take to make us better um, and make us a consistent winner or you know serious contenders, like sign me up. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I'm I'm almost there. Yeah, I I do <laughs> like Luis Robert and and Andrew Vaughn. The rest, I would not be mm -hmm. sad or feel bad if they're gone. Um, I I did. It was one of those things. It was similar to the whole Jake Berger thing in a way, and I did kind of like the haul that we got from Jake Berger. <laughs> that being said, you know, I do want to have some continuity, right? Of building up players and developing them, you know, obviously with some formidable veterans around them, but we would love to see some carryover from Luis Robert. Like hopefully he's able to play with the White Sox and maintain, you know, his level of excellence that he had this previous year on, you know, the future, like at least, you know, maybe five, five or more seasons, right? That would be great. And then he can showcase and, and mentor, you know, some other uh, players, younger talent as they go on, like, you know, Colson Montgomery or, uh, you know, other Cuban players that kind of that were able to sign, right? I feel like that would be great to have him and then have Andrew Vaughn too. Because uh, I like the way that Andrew Vaughn plays, at least, you know, is he the mm -hmm. perfect player or, you know, is he a, a, an all-star, like first baseman even? Like not, not necessarily, it's not right now, but, you know, uh, like the way he plays, plays hard and, you know, kind of gives the A level effort that you, you that we do seek for. And, you know, I, I think that's essential. So I don't know those players. I definitely like to keep everybody else. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's what well, we we have you for right now, maybe not for the long haul, but, you know, we'd love to see if we can build some continuity from here. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like those two players would like I, 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 I like those guys. The rest to hell. Like, let's just. Yeah, if we, if we if we can get as many of the Dodgers prospects, I'm all for it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you there, and uh, totally agree with Andrew Vaughn. I think he gets dogged way too much for where he's at in his own development. I mean, this guy played zero minor league innings, zero minor league innings, was brought straight <laughs> to the majors. I mean, in three years, his average about 20 homers, 70 RBIs, and he's batting 260 with a you know north of 300 OBP. You know, he's got good pop. I mean. I think this next year is going to be somewhat of a breakout for him because highly touted hitter out of college, one of the, you know, I think he was crowned the best hitter, you know, uh, in his last year of college. Um, I mean, to me, he, he, he was everything that I wanted in that draft pick when we took him. And I just think people need to be a little bit more realistic with him as he's going into his age 26 year. And he's honestly put together a pretty, you know, decent sample so far. It's just like, we actually think back and remember to Paul Canerco going through his first few years as a major leaguer and even some of the really big struggles he had with the White Sox. I mean, we stuck with him. I remember a lot of people were, you know, begrudgingly like oh, another year, Paul Canerco. And then sooner or later, I mean, he's, he's in the 400 home run club, winning a world series, being everything you want year in, year out as a leader and as a player. So 
I think Vaughn's going to step into those shoes at some point soon here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I think those two great. If we can build off, get some continuity, can get some continuity, but yeah, cease. I feel like we can move off from any of the rest of the players. Like let's, let's see what, how much we can get from them. I feel like so. For sure. Well, 